Good morning, everybody. So I took the AWS Certified Data Specialty exam. Now, this exam is focused on databases, right? So it is going to be testing whether you have worked with database services in AWS. Specifically, there is a lot of focus in the exam on both RDS. Uh, a lot of RDS questions are based around Aurora. Uh, a lot of questions are based around DynamoDB. I would say DynamoDB and RDS are sort of the two major components uh, in this exam itself. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be uh, able to understand other services. You definitely also need to understand the database migration tools, the DMT. You need to understand how to migrate databases without DMT. So what are your other options? to migrate databases when you don't want to use DMT. Uh, of course, CloudFormation is always a factor in, in databases. Uh, and then, of course, security, right? How to securely connect, how to encrypt your databases, what the processes are for encrypting, and uh, how to connect to an encrypted database versus an unencrypted database through a, uh, an encrypted connection. Uh, you also should uh, remember that there are other databases inside of AWS. Namely, there will be questions around DocumentDB. There will be questions around Neptune. There will be questions around Redshift. And they will be mostly focused towards just understanding the right type of database uh, to choose in a certain situation. What Neptune is good for? What DocumentDB... Um, uh, essentially how you can manage document DB and what document DB, what kind of document, what kind of data document DB is designed for, etc. So let's look at, uh, let's look at the uh, overview, right? So what does this one do? Validates you that you're able to run AWS database services and it will also test you on specific questions that you won't be able to understand if um, you are not, uh, working with these services. So definitely you need to be actively working with RDS, with Aurora, with DynamoDB, at least to be able to uh, pass this exam. So as always recommended knowledge and experience for specialty exams, it's five years with database technologies, two years in AWS. That can be five years altogether and two of those years in AWS. There are definitely questions that uh, will be fully hands-on, as I've said multiple times already, right? All right, um, experience with on-premises and cloud-based solutions. So basically understanding what kind of solutions you have. And um, let's look at the exam guide itself to see what kind of details we have in this exam. So uh, basically it's understanding features of database services analyze the requirements, design appropriate database solutions with AWS services. Uh, we saw the recommended knowledge, uh, the content, like always, multiple choice, multiple response questions. And of course, uh, this one requires you to have a passing score of 750. Again, this is one of the tougher exams that I've come across. Um, it really is like, it goes into detail and just, not knowing a few details that you might have not worked with, right? For example, you might have never run batch operations in DynamoDB. You might have never configured some of the options in RDS um, or some of the parameters with the uh, uh, RDS databases. You might not have used the backup software that is recommended here, but because AWS recommends it in its white papers and because you can find that in the AWS documentation, you should be familiar with that. Uh, piece of software, even though it's not AWS, right? So scoring, uh, passing score of 750 out of 1000 is pretty, pretty high level. And you have to be pretty confident uh, that you know what kind of, um, what kind of uh, database you should choose and how to configure that database to work optimally in any situation, right? So workload specific database design, right? 26%. That's true. A lot of the questions are, this is the workload, which database would you choose for this workload? 
right? And uh, the, the interesting thing is that they will give you a mix and match of relational and non-relational databases. They will give you a mix and match of different designs for relational and non-relational databases. And most of the time, the question will be saying, yes, you need to use an AWS database. Like you need to use DynamoDB, you need to use RDS, you need to use Aurora. But in some circumstances, it will be, unfortunately, that's not supported, right? So you have to run an EC2 instance with that database installed on it, right? You've got a, for example, requirement for a certain feature of uh, MongoDB that's not supported on DocumentDB. No other way of uh, running that feature uh, than building a MongoDB cluster on EC2 instances, right? And then they'll maybe ask you what kind of EC2 instances would you use? Would you use reserved, spot, or um, on-demand instances, which is the key question here sometimes. So workload specific design is gonna be a big part of it, right? You have to understand which databases to select for which workload. Uh, deployment and migration. Here, it's mostly questions about migrating databases from one location to another. A lot of the questions are based around DMS, while other questions are based around how can I do this cheaply? How can I do this where um, it will not impact my network performance. And then, of course, if it's not impacting your network performance, uh, sometimes it might be, uh, the question might be connected to a snowball service, right? So which snowball device to choose? You'll have two answers, for example, with one with VPN, one with Direct Connect, one with Snowball, and one with Snowball Edge, right? And they all might be valid. So what you're going to be looking for is the specific questions about cost, about the uh, performance, about the time that you have to migrate this database, about the simplicity, right? They say it should be as cheap as possible and as simple as possible. If they do both, then, you know, it's the question is just which service is going to be the cheapest and simplest to migrate that database. Number three, management and operations. Here is where it goes down into details. Here is where it parameters and setting options for um, RDS databases. Here is where it goes into questions about scaling your DynamoDB performance. Here is where it goes into questions about which query types should be used for DynamoDB to actually achieve that certain goal or objective. Right? It's also going to be about um, what happens, how do you reshard a DynamoDB database. So that's something to look into. Be very, very um, confident in understanding how, um, sorry, repartition, how to, how to create a new re how to create a new partition key for a DynamoDB table and how to reshard an, an RDS or Elasticache uh, environment, right? Don't forget, Elasticache is part of this too, yes, because they're in-memory databases, right? So Elasticache is also uh, um, definitely going to be a question. And with Elasticache, it's going to be asking you about things like um, differences between uh, cluster enabled and cluster disabled, right? How many replicas can you create? How many shards can you have with cluster enabled mode? So have that, uh, definitely have that feature, have those numbers in your, in your back of your mind, right? You need to know those. Um, monitoring and troubleshooting. Here is where it's mostly going to be focused on troubleshooting and which troubleshooting tools you can use. Like, for example, RDS Performance Insights are going to be the right answer. Sometimes it's not going to be Performance Insights. If, you look at, if you're looking at queries and if you're looking at features of queries, um, then you need to look at uh, RDS Insights if it's RDS. If, if query performance is on, on DynamoDB, then you need to, to capture uh, put and get operations, right? Um, if the question is about the performance of DynamoDB uh, and how to troubleshoot the performance of DynamoDB when you have a hot partition, again, something you need to look into. And then database security, uh, there is a lot of questions on encryption. There are a lot of questions on how to encrypt and enforce encryption in transit, what the exact setting is, for that RDS database type for encryption, right? So if you haven't done this before, how do you enforce encryption on an RDS database and what the specific setting is for each database? That's something that you need to be aware of. 
Also, differences between RDS and Aurora, right? Read replicas and caching. That's also a good, good thing to understand. So, for example, when to implement read replicas, when to implement caching. Uh, the uh, ability to do read replicas across regions. Uh, how do you do read replicas with uh, a specific database, right? Or are read replicas supported on this RDS database type? There's also going to be specific questions about SQL Server that I haven't seen before in any other exams. Um, so it's like very, very specific questions about uh, uh, always on or specific questions about uh, um, any tools that are connected to. I don't want to give too much away here. So I'm trying to be as vague as possible. Um, so what what um, what kind of uh, domains? So domains, if we break the domains down to uh, selecting the right database services, demanding strategies, uh, designing solution performance, comparing costs, right? What is the cheapest solution for this cost? So a lot of the times it's going to be questions about should I use multi-AZ? Should I use read replicas? Should I put the read replica in the same availability zone, in another availability zone, in another, or in the region, right? Uh, then questions about how do I migrate to Aurora, right? Uh, questions about how do I quickly establish uh, clones of Aurora databases, right? If I need to push an Aurora database into a development endpoint, what is the best option to do that, right? Or things like I need to refresh my DynamoDB table every day or I need to expire objects in a DynamoDB table, right? So very, very like detailed questions about that uh, performance tuning as far as what will be the best option so for example a company has done an analysis they see that that's their um, scope of requirements for their peak times how do you save money how do you tune performance of that database right uh, and of course um, differences between on-demand and provisioned dynamo db tables um, questions about consistency, right? Um, let's say there's inconsistency in, in, in the environment. How do I ensure that my uh, reads are always done consistently, right? And then global tables, right? A lot of questions are going to be around DynamoDB global tables and how to make sure that those global tables um, can be uh, utilized for that specific use case. And then goes into domain one, workload specific, where they will give you a workload, they will give you an actual question on uh, an application on a, or a feature that requires consistency at all times. How do I get that? What is the right API call to do, right? Um, streams, DynamoDB streams. How do I utilize streams? Uh, in a lot of cases, it will be, I need to persist some data outside. How do I utilize streams to persist that data efficiently? Uh, what else do we have? Um, yeah, um, other services, like for example, where do I feed that data from the stream? How do I collect that data from the stream efficiently, right? How do I connect? Uh, should I be using a Lambda function? Should, be, should I be using a, um, a, a KCL? A consumer client library for for uh, Kinesis where I'm feeding that data out or something like that. Um, definitely for the, for the encryption part, KMS is going to be a question. How do you use KMS uh, to migrate your environment? Uh, there's going to be questions about uh, D, the DMS service, right? How to, how to use the DMS service, the data migration service, and how to use SCT, uh, the schema conversion tool. Uh, yeah, I mean, a ton of questions uh, about those. And then, of course, uh, uh, SLAs and, and RPOs and RTOs. How do I migrate a database efficiently with the lowest possible downtime or at the lowest possible cost where this much RPO, this much RTO is acceptable? Um how do I um, troubleshoot when a, when a user can't connect to a certain database, but others can, and their username and password is correct, and they will give you a use case, and you'll have to figure out which answer is the correct answer. 
Um, I'm impressed at the, the depth of knowledge that they went into. For the actual service itself, I would recommend um, reading up on the white papers. I'll give you some recommendations uh, for uh, this one in, in a different video because uh, otherwise it's just going to be too long. And of course, that's it. AWS Certified Database Speciality. Um, it's a tough one. I definitely urge you to prepare it with, you know, a lot of experience is required here. A lot of depth of knowledge for these services is required. Uh, but yeah, um, I will do a follow up with your video about the database speciality uh, that will actually cover content that I use to prepare for this one. Uh, there is a really wide uh, set of uh, services that are, are required to be understood here and the depth of knowledge is quite quite uh, uh, quite yeah uh, quite a challenge here all right thank you very much for watching i will see you in my next video if you like this content please uh, subscribe to my channel like the videos comment the videos tell me what you want to see in these videos uh, only uh, I will basically check YouTube and, and see the comments. Well, actually, I get notified for new comments. So for now, I, I aim to respond to everybody's comment within about a few hours to a day. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you for, for your support. Thank you for listening and uh, being a part of my channel. And I will uh, I will definitely deliver some training input, training materials about what to do and and which content to to learn from and what the applicable applicable courses are to take to pass this exam thank you very much and goodbye